Hi, want to learn all about an hourly rideshare vehicle rental service? It's brand new and I'm going to tell you all about it. So stick around after the break and you're going to learn all about Kinto rideshare rental. Hi, this is Gabe Etzhoken with The Rideshare Guy, and today I'm gonna to tell you everything that I've learned about Kinto, which is a new rideshare vehicle rental service. Now, you wanna know what is Kinto? Kinto is a, uh, uh, a subsidiary of Toyota Motors, and I don't know if they're just reselling lease returns or excess inventory or whatever, but, um, they are making available um, used uh, Toyota products, uh, Priuses, Corollas, Camrys, uh, RAV4s for rental in uh, a few different markets around the United States. And the way it works is you pay by the hour and then you turn your car in. It's uh, pretty straightforward and it's similar to the business model of uh, Get Around. Uh, the get around Uber partnership where you can rent a vehicle uh, to use for Uber and you just pay by the hour. Um, in this case, uh, you go to a, a location and you rent a car that is a Toyota product. Okay, so you probably want to know, uh, how do I sign up for Kinto? Well, it, it's pretty easy. The first thing you do, like everything else you do these days, is you go and you download the app. And uh, once you've downloaded the app, you just follow the instructions in the app. It's going to involve signing up. Uh, the most important thing that you need to do after you sign up uh, to use Kinto is to um, submit proof that you work for either Uber, Lyft, or one of the delivery services like DoorDash or Postmates. Once that, once uh, the people at Kinto have reviewed that proof, they're going to approve your account and they are going to give you a link to a Google Documents drive where you download the individual documents that you need for each car at your desired rental station. Now you're like, what does that mean? Well, it's as complicated as it sounds. Here's how it works. You uh, say you're in Salt Lake City, you're gonna sign up to rent a car in Salt Lake City. And once you're approved, you're gonna get a, a Google Drive link. And in that Google Drive link, you're going to see a list of, um, well, I'll put it up over here. You're gonna see a list of all the available um, vehicles. And uh, once you see that list, if there's, say there's 10 uh, vehicles in that list, you have to put all of those 10 vehicles, each one, onto your Uber or your Lyft account. And uh, once they're on your account, then you're gonna take those documents that are in that folder and you're gonna upload them into the Uber and or Lyft systems. And then you're gonna wait for Uber and Lyft to approve those vehicles and uh, and then you'll be ready to drive. The, um, the vehicle inspection, vehicle registration, and uh, vehicle insurance documents are all included. And uh, although your insurance card is actually emailed directly to you, and um, and then you you upload them for each uh, each one of the listed vehicles. Does it sound like a complicated process and a tedious and time consuming process? Yes, it is. But if you need a car, you're gonna have to do it if you want to do this through Kinto. Now, I um, I had a, a little bit of I had personal uh, personally it was hard for me to upload those documents. It took a uh, it took a long time and then Uber and Lyft rejected them. And then when I went to Kinto customer service for some help, they're like, oh, we'll just do it again. All the other drivers do. So they're used to this. It's a known issue. Just keep uploading them until Kinto accepts them. That's all I can tell you. So once you are signed up and all these vehicles are in your account, and by the way, if you're just doing delivery, you're not gonna have to do all that rigmarole with Uber and Lyft, obviously. Uh, one, if you're just a delivery driver for Postmates or TaskRabbit or whatever, um, once you're, account is approved then you just go down to the to the rental uh, place and you get in your car uh, if you are approved with uber and lyft um, it's super easy at that point because you have all the vehicles uh, uploaded onto your account so um, once you start your rental period and you do that by selecting the car that you want and the time and day that you want and how many hours that day you prepay for those hours 
Um, and then uh, once that's all done, then you just go down and your app will open your phone. Uh, your, app, the, your app on your phone will unlock the car. And then inside the car, there's a gas card. And uh, just like uh, the way Get Around used to do it, at the end of your shift, you're going to fill it up with gas or fill it however the, the required amount is. And, uh, and then you turn the car in. If you need it for extra time, you have to rebook it if it's available. If it's not available, you better bring it back because there's a $25 late fee. You also want to know how much this costs. It The basic rate is, I have it written down here, it can be as cheap as $1.50 an hour in the middle of the day um, or as much as $3.50 an hour. And then also um, they're going to charge you mileage. And Kinto thinks you're going to average about 17 miles per hour. And then there's also some local taxes. So at the end of the day, uh, this is going to probably cost you about six fifty dollars an hour. Uh, if it's a really busy time, uh, when there's higher demand, it might be as high as seven fifty dollars an hour. If you are using a destination filter strategy, so you get the nice long rides where you can really make some decent money, you're going to pay a lot more than uh, seven fifty dollars an hour. So you got to make sure that your hourly is going to make sense. Um, of course, it's nice. You're going to be able to, uh, you're going to be able to sign up for both Uber and Lyft. Uh, where get around, you can only sign up with Uber. So that might increase your earnings a little bit and make it worth it. So you probably want to know, is Kinto worth it? I would tell you in a very qualified way, it's worth giving it a try if you think that your personal lifestyle and driving strategy and earnings strategy uh, means that you need an hourly car rental to make everything work. Uh, in that case, like say you're in Salt Lake City or uh, or Scottsdale, Arizona, this might be the only game in town for hourly rental. Maybe you just want to try Uber or Lyft, see how busy it is for a night or two, right? That's that's a that's not a bad reason to invest fifteen or twenty five dollars or, or whatever it'll cost you for two or three hours, just to see if it works out. Maybe you only do it one day a week and you don't want a whole new car to do it. Maybe you don't want to get involved in a in a monthly rental for whatever reason. I think in that case, it makes a lot of sense. The uh, The interface is clunky. It'd be nice if Kinto had a partnership with Uber and Lyft to make it easier to rent their vehicles. Uh, really, Kinto, uh, you know, pay some programmers to figure out how to make this uh, interface a little more seamless. So you, all you got to do is just uh, log on, go down, pick up the car. It's already preloaded on the, on the Uber platform. Um, I know you can do it because Get Around did it, so why not Kinto? Anyway, um, but it's not an insurmountable obstacle. If you want to spend an hour or two while you're watching TV uploading these documents, um, it should be no problem. So that is my report on using Kinto Rideshare Rental. I hope you try it out, and I hope it works out great for you. And remember uh, to uh, subscribe to our videos and to comment on the article page. And then also, uh, I want you to go out there, make lots of money, and don't drive yourself crazy. Thanks for watching.